Hello everyone, my name is Jin, and today my partner Yongxin and I will be talking about our machine learning final project at NYU Shanghai. Our project is about predicting default payment of credit card clients in Taiwan. Help from identification, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and conclusion. As we all know, for banks, risk management and default detection has always been a crucial part in issuing credit cards. Therefore, in order to reduce or even prevent default payment, banks need to determine appropriate given credit for each specific client based on their information. We are going to use machine learning methods to find answers in the data. Data comes from UCI's machine learning repository. We have 30,000 records and 21 attributes, including gender, age, education, and our label, which is default or not. Our data set, we have, um, we have some categorical variables with numeric values. For example, in feature marriage, one stands for married, two stands for single, three stands for others. Since we can't process this kind of categorical variables in our machine learning models, we converted them into n minus one dummy variables. For example, we converted the marriage feature into two dummy variables, married and single. If married has a value of zero and single has a value of one, his client will be classified as single. If married has a value of one and single has a value of zero, his client will be classified as married. If both values are zero, his client will be classified as other. We have seven demographic attributes, one attribute for credit limit, and 12 attributes regarding to the bill slash payment information of the client over the past six months. Our objective is to predict if a given client will default on his or her next payment. Our dataset has a base rate of 22%, meaning that 22% of our client in the dataset defaulted on the payment. For all the models, we used 5 fault cross validation. And for each algorithm, we tried different parameters associated with each algorithm and um, picked the one with the best evaluation performance. The algorithm we used are support vector machine, random forest, and neural networks. The first machine learning algorithm we used is support vector machine. Basically, SVM draws a boundary to separate different classes of data and tries to maximize the ma margin between each class and the boundary. In most cases, the data points are not linearly separable. The model allows certain errors by adding a penalty term when maximizing the margin. We attempted penalty parameters of 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 1.0, and all the models generate almost the same results. The second algorithm we tried is neural networks, and in this case, we built a three hidden layer perceptron with five, 10, and two units in each hidden layer. Each element in one layer is weighted and associated with every unit in the next layer. And based on the arguments of the maxima in the output layer, the input can be classified. Our model tried learning rates of 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.5 and ran 500 passes through the training set in each attempt. We tried was random forest, which is an ensemble method of classification trees. A classification tree is a tree-like graph with each internal node representing a test on a certain attribute. In the forest, the model randomly builds identical trees by taking in attributes in different orders. For every input of data, each tree gives a classification vote, and the forest will choose the classification which has the most votes. 
We did not set a limit for the maximum depths of the trees, so the size of the tree in our model turns out to be over 8,000. Then start to evaluate after running all the models. You can see from the table, almost all of our uh, almost all of our models get around 78% accuracy. However, since the base rate of our data is 22%, it means that if the model blindly predicts all clients not to default, we will still be able to generalize as well as 78% accuracy. In this case, 78% accuracy seems not useful to make meaningful prediction. Besides, accuracy measure only tells the probability of getting an error, and it is indifferent among arrows that may yield different levels of cost in reality. We decide to introduce a more advanced evaluation measure. For each model, we generate a confusion matrix, which shows the relationship between the predicted class and the actual class. In here, we have two types of arrows, false positive and false negative, and they may result in different levels of cost, which as in our case, is the cost of, predict the cost of predicting a client will default, but actually he or she will not, and vice versa. We plotted the true positive rate against the positive, uh, false positive rate which is the receiver operating characteristic curve. Thus, the area under the curve becomes our final evaluation measure for the models. If the area equals 0.5, the model is somewhat a random classifier. If the area is closer to 1, it means the model performs better. And as we can see from the table, the SVM is somewhat a random classifier and the neural networks only does a little bit better and this time random forest stands out and has a bet uh, and the, has the best of performance out of three now here comes our here comes to our conclusion accuracy yield from all our models are no better than simply predicting all clients not to default instead we use area under the curve as evaluation measure, which is more directly and naturally related to cost and benefit analysis. Based on area under the curve, random forest has the best performance. Once we have new entries of data, we can feed them into the random forest model and we can make predictions.